Hi everyone! So today is going to be a really special video because it is going to be different from the ones I usually make. So I put out a poll earlier this week asking what kind of video you guys would like to see and a lot of you suggested a daily farming routine and basically my entire Genshin routine. So I decided I'm going to finally get over that and make a video explaining everything that I do. I want to make this video somewhat short so it's not really that long to listen to and you don't have to listen to me talk and fight all the time. So I will be cutting out some of the parts that are kind of obvious or just like self-explanatory. And another thing I'd like to note is that my mouse is pretty loud and it makes a really loud clicking noise like this. And it does get annoying throughout the video, so anytime that I'm fighting enemies, I will try to mute out my mouse so you can just watch it in time lapse or something like that. Also, my keyboard is pretty loud as well, so just be aware, those are the noises that you're hearing. It's picking up through my microphone. I will try to minimize as much clicking as possible so the video is not too loud and doesn't have too many clicking noises. But overall, I just hope that you enjoyed this video and find something helpful and hopefully answers all your questions about how I farm and what my routine is. So I can't wait to get started and let's do the first thing that I always do when I log into Genshin. So as always, I like to check out my commissions first. And we have four commissions per day and this is great because I get Prima Gems and I can claim the commission rewards at the Adventurer's Guild. So it looks like my commissions today are in Mondstadt, so they're not that far away, so let's just go navigate and go to the first commission. There's usually one quest among each commission where you have to talk to NPCs, this is my least favorite one where you have to talk to the NPCs. I prefer the fighting ones because they can get done faster. But anyways, these are a little bit easier as well. So onto the second commission where I just have to fight a bunch of hilly churls. It's pretty much the same for that, so I'm just gonna quickly do the rest of the commissions and be back once it's time to claim rewards. The second commission is all done, time for the third one! Okay guys, so if you ever have this quest where you have to destroy the hilly trail towers, if you want to get this commission done faster, I have a tip just for you. It is where you only destroy the hilly trail towers instead of having to also defeat the enemies. So while you're destroying a hilly trail tower, there might be more enemies later on, but just ignore those enemies because you can still complete the commission without having to defeat them. It saves a lot of time, and as you can see, the commission is completed, even if I didn't finish defeating all the enemies. Okay, so that's the last commission done, and now it's time to claim the commission rewards, and also claim expedition rewards, and the ingredients that I made yesterday. So let's head over to Mondstadt and do that. Something I do right before I go to sleep, or right before I log off on Genshin, I always make a bunch of ingredients, or do all these things like crafting ores or those crystals. I do that while I'm not playing Genshin so it can just finish up processing and I don't have to wait for it in-game, so let's quickly obtain those. And that just helps with my cooking process so I don't have to worry about making these later. Now to claim commission rewards, I always switch to my friendship team, which is a team of characters that I have low levels on friendship XP so I can get their name cards without having to use them. For example, the characters I have are Mona, Yenfei, Yunjin, and Goro. This is because they're really low level characters and I don't need them in battle. I also can't get their name cards from doing domains since I don't use them in domains, that's why I like to switch to them when I get the friendship XP from the commissions. Claim commission rewards first. While I'm also here, I also like to claim my expedition rewards. Just like the cooking and forging, I do these expeditions while I'm not playing Genshin because it still runs and you can still claim the rewards even if you're not playing. I always put them on the longest expedition because I feel like that gets the most out of the time and so I don't have to constantly log in and refresh. The expeditions help me get a good supply of these crystals and white iron chunks. That's why I have a lot of crystal chunks without having to go out in the world and get them. Same for white iron chunks and also other resources. If you're wondering how I have so much fowl and so much meat, the answer is expeditions. 
put your character on the longest expedition and then come back and you'll have a bunch of food and you can cook without having to go out and get all these birds and do all the Timmy pigeon stuff. This is a great way to get those kinds of foods really quickly. You don't even have to pay attention to playing the game, just add a character for an expedition, log out, and then come back to this way later. I always like to make my time for claiming expedition rewards after I do my commission rewards and it's the same time every day. This expedition finishes around 20 hours and then I have the bonus from the passive talent, but around that I like to claim those rewards after commissions because I always know when to claim them and I know that they'll be ready. So even if they are ready, don't claim them until it's time to claim them because usually that's the best way you can keep your farming schedule intact and so that you constantly don't get confused. Okay, so all my characters are let out on their expeditions right now. So that means it is time to go use my resin, which is the second thing I do after doing commissions. So I quickly check how much resin I have, and currently I have 62 normal resin, and then I have 3 condensed resin, and just so you know, I do not like to use fragile resin unless it's an absolute need and I really need to use fragile resin, but that hasn't happened for like months now. The last time I probably used this was about a year ago, fragile resin I mean, so there isn't really a need to use fragile resin, and yes, I've been so tempted to use it, but I just haven't exactly found my reason to use it just yet. So I know that today I need to farm a bunch of talent materials and the thing is I have to farm Forsaken Rift and if you saw my video before about my domain tier list, you know I absolutely hate this domain because of the cryo and the icicles and everything like that. So I'm going to have to farm this one and I plan on using my 3 condensed resin on it. The reason why I'm using condensed resin instead of normal resin is because the condensed resin gives better rewards and you don't have to do the domain as many times. And I just kind of want to be done with the domain so I'm going to quickly run through it like three times. So let's head over to Forsaken Rift right now and then clear this domain and once I'm done I'm planning on using my other resin for the remaining stuff which I'll discuss in a bit. So I'm going to be doing the highest level of domain for this. Even though I really don't like the highest level, I still want to get the best rewards. For this, my team is mostly going to consist of Pyro and Electro, so instead of Mona, I'm going to have Xiangling. And then Klee is going to be the DPS, Bennett for healer, and then Raiden for support. The thing about this is that Klee and Raiden are both selfish DPSs, and sometimes when both bursts are ready, I just don't know which one to use right away. Sometimes I use the wrong burst at the wrong time, but let's just hope that we get it right this time, I guess? So the way I decide which domain I'm planning to farm for that day, I always look at the characters that I have and I know which characters I need to farm for. So I check out which talent materials I need, like talent books, and then I check out for weapons. So I do it a character at a time. I'm trying to get every character to 80 out of 90 and every talent at 199. Unless it's a main DPS like Klee and Rosaria, then it's just going to be 999. This is 12 because I have her constellation. I haven't used any crowns on any characters just yet because I haven't yet decided which character I want to crown. And also, it's really expensive and I just want to save my Mora because I'm trying to get every character to the best of their abilities before I fully invest in one single character. So today, I'll be farming freedom books for Mona. As you can see, I barely have any of these. I can't believe I had like hundreds of these before, I've just been spending it and spending it on other characters, so I kind of want to refresh my big stock in my inventory and get the books that I need. As you know, I always farm more than enough that I'll need, like if I need 12, I'm usually going to farm 20. It's just my habit and it's also how I make sure I have extras in case I need to level up a character. I've always had this mindset for Hero's Wit, like if I needed 5, I was always going to farm 10 or something like that. I have another video on saving tips, I'll link it in the corner if you want to go check that one out, but that's how I just have my inventory in check and I don't use up all my resources and I never end up broke later on. That is my worst fear, is just not having enough for a single character. It happened when I was farming Spectres for Raiden or the Catch, I believe, and I just had to constantly go out and farm and collect because I didn't collect them before. But with the saving tips I have in that video, hopefully you'll find something helpful there and maybe even possibly help your account if it's been struggling. Also, before I do this domain, I always use a stamina food. This just helps speed up the process a lot more. And so I constantly just don't run around and like having to wait for charge text to load up because that just takes way too long. So let's get started.
yeah anyways Okay, that's one time completed, and I don't know if I can survive another two rounds of this. I'll just quickly run through this domain. I don't think I have to show you because the domain kind of runs the same every single time. So I'll just quickly jump to the rewards for each domain. Okay, I just cleared the second time, so let's see if rewards are good. Not bad, same as last time. Final run of the domain. Let's hope for better rewards, please, better rewards. Also guys, a tip if you are doing domains or struggling with bosses and all those like co-op situations where you don't have time to go into your inventory and like select the food from this little menu. I made a video about gadgets in Genshin and if you don't already have the NRE menu 30, make this now. It is a Mondstadt reputation reward. So get Mondstadt reputation and do that every week because this reward is honestly a game changer back for me when I was like the early phase with a very unbuilt healer. It's gonna be in your Z slot for the PC users here and then if you're mobile just click it where the other gadgets go. All you have to do if you need to heal up is click Z and then the food basically feeds your character and you get your HP. It also works the same if you need to revive a character, which is why I absolutely, absolutely love this gadget. Okay, last time cleared, let's get rewards. Are you joking? It's the same thing. Okay, anyways, that's domain farming done. Now I just have to use the remaining resin. So let's leave this domain once and for all, finally. Quickly switched my original team, but now it is time to use the remainder of my resin. So I was thinking of doing ley lines today, and I did need a little bit of extra mora, but I think I can hold off on that since I farmed it yesterday. Just so you know, I already did all my weekly bosses for this week. And as you know, the battle pass isn't currently active right now, so I can't do the battle pass. But normally, I do the things on the battle pass, like I would go do bounties and stuff. But usually, I save those for weekends or more chill Genshin nights. I don't like to rush everything in one day. I think rushing everything promotes a lot of burnout, and it can be difficult to do everything, especially if you have a big time crunch and you don't have a lot of time to farm. So for today's resin use, I am planning on ascending Xiangling, so I will want to farm a few more XP books. If you're wondering how I have the condensed resin and the normal resin without my resin being capped, the reason why is I just join in the mornings, or because I usually do my farming at nighttime, I join in the mornings and then turn my resin into condensed resin, so I just let it fill up for the rest of the day without having to worry about it being capped. Before I claim the Leyline rewards, I switched my friendship team that you saw earlier so I can get their friendship XP. Now we just have to do this two more times with the next Leylines. So if any of you are wondering, when is the time where I go out and farm materials, like ascension materials or the stuff that drops from the mobs in Genshin? And the answer is, normally, I don't. So since I have so much stuff, that means I must go out and farm a lot, right? Actually, no, I don't go out and farm a lot of these materials. Usually from doing ley lines and commissions, I naturally just pick up these things and it's just me saving up. The thing is, I don't want to go out into the world and collect these materials 
because I feel like it might be a waste of my time. So unless you're specifically farming for a character or you have absolutely zero of that item and you really need it, then go out and farm it. But for example, if you need something like treasure hoarder insignias and you know you don't need them right away, then there's no point in going out and farming them because you know you're naturally going to get some. So I don't actually go out and collect them in the world because I feel like it might be a waste of my time and there's just no need for me at the moment since I don't really need them at this time. Okay, so this is the last of my resin. And the next thing that I do after doing resin and commissions and all of that, I go out and do the events. Normally, I just do the event that is active. So since it's this one, Spices from the West, I'm going to do this one. It's really quick, so it doesn't take a long time. It's not like the Lantern Rite where I had to go through all that story stuff. Thankfully, this is a short one, so all I have to do is just cook a bunch of spices. And then after doing that, I'm just going to do some of the Genshin chores, and one of those would be buying from this little general goods store. Next, I'm just going to stop at the foraging station. If you want to speed up the process, there is a recipe with resin, but I use the one that just uses the crystal ores, and it's also a way that I can use the stuff that I got from Expeditions. So while those chores are finishing up, usually I'm going to claim them tomorrow. The last thing I do is go and visit my teapot. I'm gonna visit it to get the rewards and also to complete the stuff required on the event. And then head over to Tubby the Teapot Spirit and claim the Adeptal Coins as well as the Friendship XP. So that was kind of it. That's mainly what I do on a daily basis. It may seem like a lot, or maybe really it didn't to you, but I've maxed out all the reputation and I've done a lot of exploration and I just don't think I need to do it on a daily basis. Some of the special stuff like completing quests are all saved for weekends or just whenever I feel like doing it, but a lot of the time I farm at night and I just want to get commissions done. If you're wondering how I farm Primo Gems, it's actually just completing the events, doing quests, I don't do anything special, I don't do much exploration, just the right amount, like opening a few chests. But just so you know, this is how I do my farming routine and yours might be completely different. This is just a way to fit my timetable. Of course, yours might be totally different. If you're wondering how long this farming routine took me in all, I started around 6.30pm and is now 7.10pm. So it was about 40 minutes or so. That also includes just talking time. So normally, it wouldn't take me that long too, but if you want to stay up to date some of my farming stuff or daily life, just go check out my TikTok. I have a Monday farming routine, so what I do with weekly bosses and stuff. But overall, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found something informative, and I hope this clarified a bunch of questions of you asking how I do my farming each day, and thank you so much for watching. For those of you who requested this video, thank you so much. I had a lot of fun making this chill video. I hope to make one sooner or an updated guide, but overall, thank you so much. I hope to see you all in our next video and have a wonderful day.